My name is Chef Henry Lama. I think it's my background. Um, I learned how to cook. My grandmother taught me how to cook. And I trained as an artist. And I became a chef after studying art. And I love to cook. I love to actually use organic stuff to make food. And I love fresh stuff. I don't like GM stuff. I like stuff that's not farmed, like the farmed prawns and whatever. I get stuff from the sea, fresh from the sea, from the fishermen, and I created dishes. And quite simple dishes, because to me, cooking is therapeutic. I enjoy it. It really calms me down. And cooking itself has connected under the COVID people over the internet. You find out people order food takeout, post food on Instagram, people make comments, and it became a whole community. I've been doing this thing for a while, and I've, I've had I've probably 15,000 followers that I post food every day, and they ask me questions, which have become one family because I interact with them every day. Most of them I don't know. I just know them on social media. But what's interesting about food is that if you eat right, the right food, food becomes your medicine in your early age, so you don't have to actually take medicine when you're older. That's what good food is all about. And the balance of food, eat vegetables, not a lot of carbs, not a lot of red meats, just the balance. Seafood, white meats, the balance. Whatever balance, it becomes medicine in your early age and you don't have to actually go taking drugs later, later in life. So, and if you, if you look at this, I'm 61 years old. I don't look 61. I eat right. I can't exercise sometimes, but I spend a lot of time in the kitchen so I lose water. I do probably 15,000 steps cooking every day or 20. And it's something I enjoy. I love it. It gives me joy to create. I like creating. I like creating food. I like interacting with people. I like people enjoying my food. And that's who I am as a chef. I'm going to create a recipe book with short videos that explains how to actually make my food. The only way you can have access is by me documenting. So what I intend to do is create an online recipe book. The difference with other people's recipe book is I have a short two-minute video that explains its recipe. Because most people actually learn visually. A lot of people don't have time to read through measurements which they don't understand. Most people don't have skills in the kitchen. But with a short video, a visual attached to that recipe, they will be able to actually use measurements that most of us can understand. One half handful, a pinch of salt, and the rest of it. But once they've seen it once, reading and going through the recipes becomes easier and they can create what I've created. So what I intend to do is do that, a couple of recipe books, all right? We'll start with the first one and videos to go with that. I'll just show you how it's done from my side. Let's go to my prepping table and look at what I do. And I will explain how I can get across to people. Even though you have a recipe book, we have a video that will take you through it. Um, the kind of food I make is quite simple, eclectic food that anybody can make at home. My background as an artist is a painter, and if you look, take a look at my food, it comes out like a palette with all colors all, all over it. So what I'm trying to do here is create two salad dishes, okay? Um, a seafood salad and a grilled chicken salad, okay? This is my board. I have a station board in front of me, which has all my ingredients I'm going to use. We start with the kale leaves, which is what I use. I prefer that to lettuce because lettuce wilts easily. The kale leaves doesn't wilt that easily. It's a bit stronger. It lasts about three, four days in the fridge. Then with the tomatoes, I use cherry tomatoes. They're locally grown, nice, juicy. They have the pita black olives. I have the calamari grilled. And we have the... Um, green potato olives. We have the green prawns, parsley chopped, and this is yogurt and meat dressing, and we have cucumber. So what I have on the other side is the grilled chicken. Grape is what I use for my salad as well. And we have the olive oil bread. The wine I sip once in a while to refresh me. Then let's make, let's make a uh, a seafood salad, right? Your base is the kale leaf, okay? You take, look, the measurements with salads, 
right? A lot of people don't understand grammage in terms of actually measuring stuff. So what I tend to do to make it simple for the viewers at home is to use a handful of letters, right? A handful and a half is my base letters, okay? Then I have my cucumber, about 10 strips of it, all right? So what you try to do with this, you balance the colors out. In terms, that's the way I make my food anyway. But you see it comes out tasty if you don't balance the colors. So we do that with the cucumber. Then we have the cherry tomato, okay, which you go. For this salad, I use six, okay? I place them in a way that the colors actually balance out. Then we go for the pitted black olives. In plating, right, you actually try to make it look nice and try to balance the colors sometimes if you can. But it actually comes out nicer if the colors are balanced. Right, now we have the pitted green olives for contrast, actually. We have that here. That, that, and that. So we now go for the seafood. You have calamari here. We place them in between the black, pitted black olives for contrast of color. Then we go this way. It's just a balance with food plating. It's interesting because if you just watch the colors, they all come out. Then we have the prawns, the grilled prawns. So we take that, you balance that as well. So the plating of it is important because it actually looks nice, but because you eat with your eyes first before you actually taste the food. So we'll go there and Bob's and Uncle, we're done. Okay. That would be your typical seafood salad. Okay. Now, then you now look at the colors on your plate. Then look at the colors that need a bit of darkness in there. Then you place that. All right. Now we're done. Then we garnish it with parsley. Actually, it comes out very nice if we garnish it properly. Okay. All right. So now you have the dressing. This is something we made earlier. It's a yogurt mint dressing with a bit of white honey. So what you tend to do is add up, serve this by the side. Or you just drizzle on the salad. Like that. That's your seafood salad. Okay. Yeah. We're good. So no, I think I think we're fine. We do the green, we just sprinkle it with him, so it actually makes it look like you are actually coming out of a forest and you have a salad. So that's it. We're now going to make a grilled chicken salad. So what we do with the grilled chicken, we cut it into chunks that are manageable to chew, which makes it easier to have your salad. Okay. So you see, when you, juice, you, you, you grill the chicken, don't let it go dry. You can see this is quite juicy. You know, so when it's dry, it's not quite tasting them out, so it doesn't have any flavor. So this, keeping it moist retains the flavor. Now, the same thing, we go back to our salad bowl, a handful and a half, right? That's our base kale leaf, right? And we now go to cherry tomatoes. 
Ja? Okay. Du går til Kukumba. We have that. Place the cucumber in between the cherry tomatoes. Then we take it's just a balance of colors in terms of plating food, which is very interesting. It's like working with a canvas. So next thing we have, we have the green patella leaves. Okay. Balance of colors as well. Then we go to the chicken. Okay. Really don't want to lose my glass of wine. Add a twist to it. I actually use grapes at times for my salads to balance the sweetness and saltiness of um, the chicken and the spices and the marinade. So what we have here, then we now plate the chicken. Kill cool. that. So we we kind of have a chicken salad right now, so we do that. Okay, one cherry tomato for balance. Then we have that. We garnish. And Bob's your uncle, that's your grilled chicken salad. Easy to make, easy to grill chicken. You pan fried with a little olive oil. I'm cooking on low heat on each side. Let's say five minutes on each side. Take it out, let the rest for 10 minutes, and that's done. But you always serve your salad with a slice of bread. Okay, this is olive oil, uh, olive, olive bread, which you can get from any decent bakers. And that's your salad. Steamed chicken salad. Yeah. Nice. Chicken is quite tasty, actually. Then uh, grilled chicken salad. And you have your seafood salad with a slice of olive bread by the side. Okay? That's it. Well, it's quite easy. Making food is not that difficult. What most people don't understand in recipe books is that you have grammage. The grammage, people really don't have skills in their kitchen. So what we tend to, I tend to do is tend to use measurements they understand. A handful, a pinch, three olives, five cherry tomatoes, one prawn cut into six. And those measurements are easy for anybody to cook in their kitchen. So with weights and measurements in different continents, there are different weights and measurements. Some are metric, some are different, some are in Chinese, which I don't understand. But the visuals allow you to actually use measurements in your kitchen that you're used to. And that way you can achieve, and menus become easy to use, and menus become easy to read. So we tend to actually like to get people to cook and understand how to cook. Don't get scared by looking at recipe books and looking at measurements, metric or non-metric. So, voila, this is how easy it is to actually create these things. Next time, I'm taking a different journey entirely. I might end up going fishing, get our fresh cash, and cook on the beach. I'm actually do a farmhouse series, where we cook on the farm, use the fresh vegetables. I'm actually do a grilled meat series, and go and find meats and different kind of meats that's been grilled in Nigeria. And that will be a surprise. We don't know what we're doing yet, but that's what we're looking forward to. My name is Thierry Chef Henry, and I'll see you guys next time on The Coronary Journey.